Welcome back, my lovely friends. How are you? I missed you guys. I hope you guys missed me. Happy, happy, happy new year. Happy turnaround era year. Are you excited? I'm excited. So before we get started, call your siblings, get your friends, tell them about the, um, the show that's gonna start, send the link to them, okay? And then we'll get started. But before we get started, let's get, uh, get into our short prayer. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a new year. We thank you for keeping us in the year 2020. We thank you for your divine protection. And we thank you for ushering us into the years of turnaround era. We bless your holy name, Abba Father. Lord, we thank you that we have gathered again in your name. You said where two or more are gathered that you are in our midst. Father Lord, as we have come to hear your word, we ask, Abba Father, that you prepare our hearts to receive that which you have for us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you take absolute control and be the ruler of this this show in Jesus mighty name father Lord we thank you be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed amen are you guys ready to dance all right let's give our Jesus our best dance move hey anything that's gonna stop you from giving Jesus your best dance move it to the side move it to the side I'll see you guys in a little bit I waited patiently for the Lord He turned to me and heard my cry He lifted me out of the slimy pit Out of the mud and mire He set my feet on a rock Gave me a firm place to stand He set my feet on a rock Gave me a firm place to stand Set my feet on a rock I waited patiently for the Lord He turned to me and heard my cry He lifted me out of the slimy pit Out of the mud and mire He set my feet on a rock And gave me a firm place to stand He set my feet on a rock Gave me a firm place to stand Set my feet on a rock Okay, now before we get into today's topic, I wanted to show you guys something really quick. So before we, I show you what I have, I want you guys to get a journal or a piece of paper and a pencil because you're gonna be writing some things down. If you don't have that, just pause the video, hurry, go get it, come back and click play, all right? All right, now what I'm gonna talk about is called My Goals and Dreams. Some of you already might know about it and some of you might not. If you know about it, perfect, you get to practice some more. If you don't know about it, Perfect, you get to journey with us in something new. All right, so what is my goals and dreams? It's something that you plan out for a new year or a new month to help you be a better version of yourself. All right, so on your sheet of paper, you're going to make a T-chart. On one side, you're going to list down things that you might need to work on. Just think about last year, something you struggled with, something you might need to work on. It could be in the house, it could be your friendships, it could be your relationship with your parents or with your siblings. You're going to list that on that one side. When you're done listing it down on one side, on the other side, you're going to pick one thing that you're going to focus on for the month of January, just like I did right here. 
and in the month of January, you're gonna plan out how you're going to help yourself work on that specific goal to be better, all right? So I'm, I hope you guys get to do this, do this activity so we can see how you're making progress for the month of January. All right, my friends? Now we're going to go into today's topic. Today's topic is called Win in Prayer. But before we start talking and discussing about it, we're going to watch a short video about Esther. And we're going to learn how Esther used prayer and fasting to get answers from God to, during a situation that they were facing in her time. All right, so pay attention, enjoy, and we'll be right back. The Persian Empire was a glorious kingdom full of riches, splendor, and majesty. The Persians had conquered the world. They invaded Israel and took many of God's people as exiles to Persia. So there were many Jews living there. The king of Persia was Ahasuerus, a mighty ruler. To celebrate his vast power and kingship, he hosted a banquet that lasted a whole week. People ate the finest food, drank the most expensive wine, and had all the entertainment they wanted. In the middle of the crazy party, Ahasuerus asked his beautiful wife, Vashti, to come before the people. He wanted to show off her great beauty. So the king's servants were sent to Vashti and told her she must come to the king to be displayed at the banquet. Queen Vashti did not want to be part of the drunken party and be disgraced like that, so she refused the king's order. This was unheard of. No one refused the king. When the king heard of this, he was furious. Who dare refuse the king? This would set an example to all the wives in the kingdom to disrespect their husbands. He had to set an example. So according to the advice of his experts in law, King Ahasuerus removed her crown, banished her from the kingdom, and declared that Persia had no more queen. When the king's anger finally subdued, he remembered Vashti and missed her. When his counselors saw his turmoil, they came up with a plan. They told the king to send out men to gather all the young, beautiful women in the kingdom and bring them before the king. This way he could choose from amongst them his new queen. The king liked this plan, and soon news spread throughout the kingdom. Throughout the empire, beautiful young girls were taken away, and after many days of beauty treatments, they were brought before the king. One such girl, Esther, lived with her uncle Mordecai. She was beautiful indeed, but she was also a Jew. After all the young girls the king met with, he decided that Esther was the most beautiful woman in all the land. He chose her to be his wife. Esther the Jew was now the queen of Persia. Esther was wise about her new position and kept her Jewish identity a secret as there were some people in the land who hated the Jews. One of the king's most important officials was a man named Haman. He was a wicked man that hated the Jews. One day, Haman came before the king and presented a plan that made it sound like he was protecting the kingdom from potential enemies, but in actuality, would annihilate all the Jews in the Persian Empire. Haman knew that once this edict was signed by the king, it would be irrevocable. So the king believed Haman, and the edict was signed. Because Esther kept her Jewish identity a secret, Haman did not know that she was part of the race he wanted to annihilate. When Mordecai, Esther's uncle, heard about the horrible new law, he was devastated. He and all the Jews across the land tore their clothes, placed ashes on their heads, and went into mourning. But God knew of all these things, and he helped Mordecai come up with a plan. Even though the law could not be changed, the simple fact that the queen of the empire was a Jew could somehow save them, since the king would never let his wife be killed. Mordecai then pleaded with Esther to make her identity known to the king. But Esther was afraid, as no one was allowed to appear before the king without an invitation, or you would certainly be put to death. Knowing this could cost her her life, she proceeded to dress in her finest royal clothing and went 
and stood in the inner court of the king's palace. When the king saw Esther, she found favor in his eyes, and he held out his scepter to her. This was the signal that the king allowed Esther to approach his throne. What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? I'll give you anything, even half my kingdom, the king said. Esther's request was simple. She wanted to have a meal with Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and the king. She was going to find a way to tell the king about Haman's evil plot. Twice, Esther held a banquet for the king and Haman. And finally, on the second night, she revealed her Jewish identity to the king and explained to him the consequences of the terrible edict that would annihilate her and her people. When the king heard this, he was furious. He stormed out to the palace gardens. When he came back, he found Haman falling on the couch where Queen Esther was sitting, and in his rage thought that Haman was assaulting the queen. Immediately, the king's guards grabbed Haman and took him away. Then one of the servants remembered the gallows that Haman built on which to hang Mordecai. He told the king about this, and the king ordered that Haman himself be executed on those very gallows. Once again, the queen risked her life and went before the king uninvited. She wept and pleaded to him, for the edict would still destroy her people. The king then issued a new one that gave all the Jews in the Persian Empire the right to take up arms and defend themselves against this coming attack. When that day finally came, the Jews rose up against their adversaries and took control of them. Even the palace officials and governors helped the Jews, and they were victorious. The Jewish people celebrated God's victory and instituted a festival that is yearly observed unto this very day. During the festival of Purim, the Jewish people recall God's provision and Esther's bravery. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that, book, that story about Esther and how she fasted and prayed for three days before she went into with the king. We're going to talk about a little bit of that as we journey into our topic for today. Remember I told you our topic for today is called Winning Prayer. Do you guys know this song? Jesus is a winner man, a winner man, a winner man. Hey, Jesus is a winner man. A winner man all the time. Why was Jesus a winner man? He was a winner man because he was a praying man. All right. So today we're going to be focusing on what is prayer. Prayer is how we communicate with God. That's our first point. We communicate with God through prayer. Just like you talk to your earthly father every day. Imagine if you woke up every day and you just didn't speak to your earthly father throughout the day. You ate breakfast, you ate lunch, you ate dinner, you watched a movie, and then you did all you had to do and you went to sleep. Your dad would think that there was something wrong with you, right? So it's the same thing with our, our, our Heavenly Father. We talk to him through prayer. We communicate with him all throughout the day. It's just it could be in a little sentence, it could be a, a specific time you talk to him, but it's important that we spend that time to communicate with God. So I want us to read a, a version from the Bible from, chap, from John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, John, Jesus explained, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes next to the Father except through communion with me. So we cannot come through the Father, Abba Father, unless we spend time and communicate and pray to Jesus. That's how we get closer to Jesus and that's how we get closer to Abba Father. So it's very, it's very, very important that we spend time and we, we, we take our time to, communi com to communicate with God through prayer, right? So our next point is, what is prayer? It is the way we get answers from God through prayer. It doesn't have to be when you have a need that you get answers from God. It could be about any situation, anything in your life. You pray to God to give you guidance, to give you answers to, on to, on the, on the, to whatever it is that you're facing or whatever it is that you need answers or guidance to. You talk to God and he will guide you and give you answers to those things. And, but I want to remind you that remember, you don't just pray to God only when you have a need. That is not a kind thing to do. Just like you wouldn't go to your father to tell, and you wouldn't tell your earthly father, Daddy, can I have some 
ice cream? Can I have this? Can I have that? And you only talk to him when you have a need. That would hurt your earthly father's heart, right? That, that's not a kind thing to do. You talk to him even when you have a need and when you don't have a need, all right? Now, the next the reason why we pray is, oh, sorry, can you put it back? Now, the next reason why we pray is that we pray, we pray to God through the name of Jesus. Remember I told, we just read that scripture from John chapter 14, verse six. It said, no, we cannot talk to our Father unless we have communion with Jesus Christ. So what does that, what does that mean, union? That means you just felt you're fellowshipping with him. You're spending time with him through prayer, all right? So we, we, we're praying to God in the name of Jesus because we know that in the, if he said wherever two or more are gathered that we're in, in, in his, that he's in our midst. He said anything we ask in his name he will give us if it's according to his will so we have to remember that when we're praying we're not we are not praying in any other name but the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus just like in John chapter 12 verse 27 to 28 it says now my soul is troubled and what shall I say father save me from this hour no it was it was for this very reason I came to the father I came to this hour father glorify your name then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it, glorify it again. So we see that the importance that Jesus was praying to his father and God told him that he has glorified his name. And because of God has glorified the name of Jesus, we as children of God, we can pray through Abba Father through the name of Jesus Christ. What's another reason why we pray? The next point is that the reason we pray is to be empowered. Be, be empowered and that goes to the next thing I'm going to talk about it talks about fasting remember we just read that we just saw the story about Esther remember when the Jews were getting ready to be killed right so Mordecai and Esther and the Jews they started to pray and fast and we saw that Esther went to pray and fasted for three days and three nights and God gave them deliverance right so we pray so that we can be empowered she was empowered through prayer and fasting and God answered her and intervened for the people of the Jews so prayer brings empowerment if we have to be powerful in this world we have to be we have to make sure that we spend time praying and spend time fellowshipping with God. Now the next point we're going to talk about is fasting. Remember we're in the season of fasting in, in, in the church as a church in general. So why is fasting tied with prayer? Prayer is great, but it's even more better when we add fasting to it. I know some of you, you're a little young, right? And some of you, are, you're maybe five, six years old, seven years old, and some of you are like nine, 10, 11 years old. I know some of you might be young, but fasting means that you sacrifice something. You give up your food. It doesn't have to be food. It could be something that you do a lot, like games or being on the computer. You can give that up as a fast as well as giving up your food. So I know some of you, like I said earlier, some of you are young and you say, ah, oh, I might not be able to fast. Now think about Jesus Christ, right? Jesus was 12 years old when he was in the synagogue. He was talking about the scriptures and he was, he was teaching the older people about the scripture. He didn't start doing that at 12 years old. He started when he was your age. So if you're young and you say, if you want to try a fast, you and maybe you eat breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning. How about you try eating breakfast at nine? You sacrifice one hour. That's still a progress. And God sees that you're trying your best to give up food for a little bit, all right? You don't have to do like the giant fast because I know you're young. But if you're 12 years old, I think you could give up maybe two hours, three hours, okay? So just making sure that you're giving up a little bit of something that you're used to as a fast to God so that when you're praying, you're being empowered in addition to your fast. All right, my friends? So think about what I said today. Talk about, talk, talk about it with your parents and say, hey, um, Bucci said that we can fast. We can give up 30 minutes of our breakfast time or an hour or two. Talk about it with your parents and see what they say and make, maybe you guys can come, with, come up with a decision together. All right, and I would love to know how you guys went with the discussion with your parents and with the fasting. Remember, Jesus was 12 when he, when he was in the synagogue teaching the other people and they, even the older ones. The pastor said that he had so much wisdom, right? But so I want you guys to start now. You're not too, you are not too young to start right now. So start now with giving up something. I know you guys can give up your games. I know you can. I know you can give up that computer, okay? So now that's all we're gonna talk about for today. So let's round up. What did we talk about? What is prayer? Prayer is the way we communicate to God, right? 
The second thing we said is prayer is the way we, got, we get answers from God about anything that concerns our lives or the lives of, lives, lives of other people. It doesn't have to be when we need a need. Now, what else did we talk about? We said prayer is where, when we pray through the name of Jesus. And we also talked about fasting. We said prayer empowers us, especially when we do a fast, just like the story of Esther. All right. I hope you guys learned something today and I hope you implement it. And also with the my goals and my dreams. And I would love to hear from you guys. And I really hope you have a great, 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 great week ahead. All right. So before we go, let's just say a short end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that has come for today. We thank you, O oh Lord, my Father, for teaching us about praying and fasting. Lord, we ask for grace. You said it's not by might, nor by power. It is only by your spirit. We ask that you empower us this week with your divine grace, O oh Lord, to pray and to spend more time with you, Abba Father, in union with your son, Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you give us the grace to sacrifice, to give up whatever it is that we need to give, us, give up during this week, during this period of fasting, O oh Lord, that we may come closer to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we thank you. We ask that you bless our week, Abba Father, that as we go, we go with wisdom and empowerment in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we thank you. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hey, kids and parents, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe down there. Oh, I'm going to come after you. I'm just kidding. Subscribe. Bye, guys.